TV de Invenție, un CEO al companiei Shape Robotics, este o companie daneză, este reprezentantul de asemenea al consorțiului de companii care a creat ultimele două smart lab-uri pilotate de către asociația INAPO. Shape Robotics este o companie care creează roboți specializați în educație, folosiți pentru a învăța cum să construiești, cum să experimentezi, cum să programezi roboți, cum să crezi, cum să inovezi. David are un doctorat în robotică și experiență de peste 14 ani în robotică și inteligență artificială. A ocupat diverse funcții în cadrul unor universități de top, precum Technical University of Denmark și University of Southern Denmark. A fost visiting researcher la universități de renume, printre care MIT Media Lab, APFL și Carnegie Mellon. A lucrat ca cercetător pentru companii precum Lego pentru a duce pe piață noi produse. Iar pe David l-am invitat să vorbească, desigur, în limba engleză, el fiind de origine daneză, despre rolul roboticii educaționale în școli pentru a dezvolta aceste noi competențe despre care Iulian Sancho a vorbit atât de corect noi competențe necesare pe piața muncii și să împărtășească experiența pe care a avut-o alături de noi în crearea celui de-al șaselea și al șaptelea Smart Lab, adică laborator educațional digital uh, inteligent uh, din România și noi spunem, zic eu cu siguranță și certitudine uh, a lucrului bine făcut, că este cel mai avansat Smart Lab din Uniunea Europeană și este construit în mediul rural la Bucov, în județul Prahova. David, please take the floor and uh, introduce your, your presentation. All right. Uh, well, thanks a lot for the for the introduction and uh, allow me to uh, to give this presentation in English. Um, so, I actually, I want to uh, to show some uh, some slides um, so that we can we can all see what it is that I'm uh, that I that I want to see. Let me just uh, share my screen. So, Andrea, is it uh, is it visible now? That's perfect for us. Please go excellent, on. Excellent, excellent. So what I want uh, to, to do with this opportunity is to tell you a bit about um, how educational robots can help students uh, develop the skills which are important in the future, uh, both work, but also in life. Um, and, whoops. So <clears throat> um, what's of, uh, much of what we have considered in uh, traditional education I mean, that was really defined in another age, um, in another time, uh, but there are less and less of these kind of factory jobs that you can see in this picture here. And, and that also means that it's, it's very um, important for the students to learn new kinds of skills, something that is more important for today. So today it's not so important to learn a lot of facts uh, by heart, and it's not so important to, to be able to follow instructions closely given by some kind of authority, like a manager or a teacher. And, and because of these reasons, the educational system is, is changing, uh, changing very rapidly. Um, and this is very much driven by the digitalization uh, of our societies, uh, of our lives, and also including uh, the labor market. Uh, so um, according to a McKinsey report, 47% of all jobs tasks uh, will be automated by 2034. So this means that robots, computers, uh, automated systems, they are making humans more efficient really uh, in all kinds of industries um, and thereby it's really reducing the number of people required to do the job. And I mean, I think we can all uh, look back in history and, and look, for example, in agriculture, uh, the, big, the huge influence that the farming machines, tractors and so forth, forth had on, the, on, the, um, on what kind of jobs was, uh, was there. I mean, many people moving from, from farming into other kind of industries, and we're seeing the same trend today, uh, where where uh, digitalization and robots and so forth are, are really changing the, uh, the the labor market. Um, so what is uh, what is clear is that the future requires um, what we call the STEM or STEAM skills. So this is uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and and math, and that um, many of um, <clears throat> And, and that many jobs are being created in, in these areas where humans and technology, they work very close together. So these are pictures with some examples. So maybe, you know, a future job and already an existing job, of course, is to, to do inspection using drones. You're looking for cracks, looking for corrosions in, in constructions, uh, bridges and so forth. 
Another example here is uh, automation. So imagine that you have these kind of collaborative robots and, and rather than manually tending a CNC machine or tending a machine, you set it up to work over the weekend. The robot opens the door, takes out the piece, put it somewhere else. And this is this is this is part of everyday life today. Uh, surgeries is another thing. Uh, you know, uh, robots and and, uh, and and digitalization of of medical things, like for example, surgeries through robots, self-driving cars, uh, or, and trucks is a huge um, driver of of change when it comes to different kinds of jobs in the future. Um, <clears throat> So when we are talking about uh, these uh, STEAM uh, subjects, what they tend to be is they tend to be extremely interdisciplinary. So, um, and, 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 you know, the cool thing is that, that you can actually teach them in, in ways where these things come together in a very nice way. Let me give you an example. So for example, in, in the past, we had students build different kinds of robotic companions, robotic pits for their homes and for their families. And to do that, I mean, you really need to combine the skills from arts, you need to combine skills from engineering, technology, you need mathematics to make the robot do what you want it to do and so forth. And the point here is really that, uh, that these kinds of uh, educational robots, they sit right at the sweet spot where um, all the different STEM subjects, uh, they come together. And, and that is why uh, educational robots is super powerful when you, when you bring them into the classroom and you equip the teachers to actually teach these kinds of things is because these, these robots allow you to create these kinds of projects where these subjects uh, comes together and really create very valuable learning for the students. So, <clears throat> so you know, uh, part of what they will learn is of course, things like programming. So, um, it's not only about um, learning the language of computers, uh, it's also about um, uh, being able to learn sort of the process of solving complex problems, breaking it down into smaller parts, uh, thinking systematically about, uh, you know, solutions and problems and solving the individual parts uh, individually and often, very often in a sort of a trial and error approach, which can be extremely valuable in, in many other situations than just, uh, just programming. When it comes to creativity, for me, that really means uh, combining uh, existing knowledge in new ways to create something that has some kind of novelty. And what we can see is that this is often very, very motivating for the students. They learn a lot. They're very engaged because they feel they're creating something new, which they, which they also are. And then uh, when we talk about innovation, what that really means is that you need to create something that has a value for someone else, something that is new, that has a value. It's not something that is, um, you know, just an assignment you solve. So for example, in the picture shown on, on, the, on the slide here, you can see a boy and an old lady and what he has built, he has built a robot, a welfare technology robot that can help her eat. So uh, because uh, she's very shaking on her hand. So actually feeding herself is very difficult. So after visiting her, uh, visiting her, he came up with this kind of, a, you know, solution for her problem where she could, the robot could help her feed herself. So this is, this is really, very powerful, it's very interdisciplinary. It helps the students understand how to solve problems which are not just you know relevant for a school assignment, but it's actually relevant for uh, for, for you know for society as a whole when they grow up and they, they you know they they study uh, whatever they want to study, but they have this kind of mindset of actually solving problems for other people, which is really valuable. And then one of the last thing I just want to, to say now is that what we really like to promote is this kind of problem-based learning uh, where, you know, learning shouldn't be like you see on the left here with the teacher pouring information into the students' heads because it really doesn't work. I mean, the teacher standing at the blackboard telling students uh, and trying to transfer the knowledge of the students into their heads, it doesn't work. It creates tired students, it creates demotivated students. What really works is when you have a much more a problem-based approach where the students, they come up with an idea and say, ah, maybe I should build a, you know, whatever kind of robot. Maybe I could build a robot that goes together with UiPath or, or you know, something that solves other problems for, for, for another company. And then they, you know, try to imagine this, um, you know, solution that they have to a problem. They try to build a prototype, they, they experiment with that prototype, they show it to people, the teachers, their friends and so forth. And that process, they start to think about what is it really that I have done? You know, maybe I could have done it a little bit smarter, maybe I could have done it more efficient. 
And then they have learned something. And this is kind of like a learning spiral that I think we can all relate to, you know, gradually building on top of what you have learned in the past to get better and better ideas and, and, and be able to actually, you know, do new things. And this is, this is the type of, um, of learning that we really want to promote. So that was, uh, that was all I wanted to say, uh, maybe just uh, rounding off by saying that we are very happy uh, with all the, 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 the cool things which are going on in Romania and we are very happy to be part of, uh, of the community down here. So uh, yes, I will, um, I will unshare the slides and uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to ask them to me. Yes, in educating the teachers in mm -hmm. uh, book of uh, Smart Lab, you were using other Romanian teachers dealing with this uh, fable robot how did you do it well i think it's a um, so uh, but first of all i mean we have some some excellent colleagues that, that are able to to help in 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 the smart labs and i think um you know educating the teachers is is really about um getting their hands dirty it's really about putting them in a, in a learning environment where they can where they can where they, where they have some, of course, some content, they have some structure and they have some training, but they also, they also just need to try out things and learn like we all do, which is very much on a trial and error basis. So not being afraid of trying out things, I think that is, that is the most important thing also when it comes to, to teachers becoming prepared to, uh, to take technology into the classroom. Thank you a lot. Pentru cei care ne-au urmărit și poate nu sunt suficient de versatili în limba engleză, deși au avut prezentarea PowerPoint în limba română, David ne-a vorbit despre un nou model funcțional de învățare, apelând la roboți, la o învățare bazată pe rezolvarea de probleme, pe transdisciplinaritate și chiar...